Hello there. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Fandom Fights. We are here for another singles match. We got Matthew Chen going up against Mr. Mike Shea. Looking forward to this one. Uh, Two of the uh, most pleasant people in the league. Uh, They just show up. They they have knowledge. And they're nice. Could we ask for anything more? I don't think we could. Uh, So I'm super excited I get to host this one because, like I said, I think Matthew and Mike are just great guys. Uh, They know trivia, and they also just come in, have positive attitude, and have fun, and that's what I'm looking forward to. So we are going to go talk to them right now in the promos. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's uh, Mike Shea here coming to you live. That's right. We are live on the air. This is the first time I've ever done a live network television show. So I'm going to try my best to be super clean and and family friendly, and hopefully everybody else will today. But it's great to have you, the live studio audience, here with us. I can't wait to hear your feedback. Remember not to shout out any answers. We don't want to hear you guys. And uh, let's just let's just have a grand old time here, live on the air, raising money for a telethon. It's 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 truly a magical time to be alive. Matthew, we're here. Um, you like melee, and yet they keep forcing you to play fandom. But that's okay, because you're better at Phantom than you think you are. Um, <laughs> this is going to be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I'm just looking forward to having a fun match. Mike uh, seems like a great guy, so I just want to have some fun. Cool. Uh, good luck to both of you, but hopefully more luck to you. Light the fuse, you know, the drill, all the stuff. Mike Shea adding his name to the list of people who have played from a uh, automotive vehicle. Uh, this is going to be a fun one. Let's get into it. Starting with round number one. Here's how it's going to work. There are going to be 10 questions from 10 random categories within the realm of fandom fights. Each question is worth one point a piece. If you get all 10 questions correct, you're going to be issued a bonus question to you. Only to you. And uh, be on the lookout. Or no, not be on the lookout. What am I talking about? Be on the lookout, I guess, if you get all 10 questions correct, you get the bonus question, so maybe. uh, Three repeats and a challenge, gentlemen, for the entirety of the match. Any questions? Nope. Nope. All right, let's do this. Your first question is in the category of Worlds of DC. How does Zod die in Man of Steel? Um, I was uh, about three minutes late to hosting this match. I was writing uh, deep cuts uh, for the uh, for a title match that has already happened. You've already seen it. Did my questions get asked? Probably not. Bucky is attempting to use my controller. Five, four, three, two. One, pens down. Next thing I know, he's going to be purchasing video games. Uh, let's go to Matthew. I said next snapped. And Mike. Um, I said Superman rightly snaps his neck. <laughs> that is correct. So one to one, your next question is in the category of sci-fi icons. Who plays the android Marcus Wright in Terminator Salvation? Uh, Bucky attempting to assault his mother uh, with, with snuggles does not understand why this cannot happen at the moment. Baki, you beautiful bastard. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Mike. I think I'm thinking of the wrong movie, but I said Jai Courtney. And um, Matthew. I, I blinked on the name. Uh, Jai Courtney is the answer. Or not Jai Courtney, I'm sorry. Wow, Sam Worthington. Oh, you said you oh, said okay. Jai Courtney, and that was in my brain. Sam <laughs> Worthington is the answer. Uh, okay. So it is still one-to-one. My apologies. 
Uh, I'm like very focused on my beautiful dog. Uh, okay, so one to one is the score. Uh, your next question is in the category of Disney animation. Which Disney animated film features a whale named Monstro? Do you know the answer, Maggie? She's not listening. Understood. Uh, got it. I heard myself say Jai Courtney and then immediately was like, no. You. I was like, damn, I'm good. <laughs> no. <laughs> Five. No. Four. Three. Two. One. Pets down. Let's go to Matthew. Pinocchio. And Mike. I think we both spelled it right. Pinocchio. <laughs> Pinocchio is correct. So two to two. Your next question is in the category of James Bond. In License to Kill, Sanchez bribes agent Ed Killifer who works for what government organization? This is a very good movie. Yes, it is. This is probably my third favorite Bond movie. Ah, third or fourth. Top five. Dalton's, an underra- Dalton's underrated. Dalton I, he's my second favorite Bond. Five. I like Dalton. Three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Mike. CIA? And Matthew. I also went CIA. Uh, both are incorrect. We were looking for the DEA. The oh, DEA. So that's right. Your yeah. next question is in the category of Star Trek. An, oh, geez. We are on a dark path today, guys. Your question is, who kills Shinzon in Star Trek Nemesis? Lots of death-related questions today, folks. I know who wrote this round one, then. Britney? No, I'm just kidding. I have actually have no idea who it was. <laughs> Might have been Bucky. Hug. You pass? Whoever it is uh, definitely needs a hug. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Matthew. I said Picard. And Mike. I also said Picard. Picard is correct. It is three to three. Your next question is in the category of criminal underworld. In John Wick, which member of John's family had recently died before he came out of retirement? I'm thinking I'm back. A great movie. I will never forget that the trailer for the first John Wick dropped four weeks before it premiered in theaters. It was such a weird thing. I worked at the theater at the time, and then I just went and saw the movie, and it was fucking great, and everyone was like, really, that movie? And I was like, it's so good. And then now look at it. It's fucking huge. And uh, I credit myself. It's it's because of me. Five. It's the power of Keanu. Three, <laughs> two, <laughs> one. Pens down. Let's go to Mike. Uh, I believe it was his wife. And Matthew. I, yeah, I said mother. I it's, uh, wife is correct. So Mike will take a one point lead. Your next question is in the category of DC. Who is the only character that appears as a member of the Teen Titans in Teen Titans Go to the Movies and the Justice League in DC League of Super Pets? Um, so Nick has been on vacation the last few days. This is my third match in a row that I've hosted by myself. Uh, it's been great. It's been very fun. Although I, yesterday in a match, I accepted just league of super pets as an answer and not DC league of super pets. And I lost sleep about it. Don't know if I should have done that. The person who said it though, lost the match. So I don't feel that bad. Uh, We'll see how Nick feels about it. Five, four, three. When he returns, two, one. Pens down. Uh, Matthew, let's go to you. I said Cyborg. And Mike. I also said Cyborg. Cyborg is correct. It is five to four. Your next question is in the category of mixed bag. Ooh, what could it be? What actor appears in the following fandom films? X-Men Origins Wolverine? Turbo and Hobbs and Shaw. Um, I saw all three of these films in the cinema. Um, one of them I brought my niece to at the time she was seven. 
I was shocked she didn't like Hobbs and Shaw more. Five. Repeat that's the question. A joke. Okay, that's going to be the first repeat for Mike. What actor appears in the following fandom films? X-Men Origins Wolverine, Turbo, and Hobbs and Shaw. All jokes aside, my niece was 11 when Hobbs and Shaw came out. And uh, she did not see it. Nor has she since, I think. She turned 16 over the weekend. It was a, it was a magical time. We had brunch. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Let's go to Mike. I've seen one of these movies, so I'm going to guess T.J. Miller. And uh, Matthew. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds is correct. White shadow. Uh, okay, your next question is coming in the and it's tied up five to five. Your next question is in the category of Law and Order. Character, or sorry, characters parachute off of a large structure using a giant flag in which Why in Order film? Law and Order. What am I saying? Why in Order? Why in Order? Am I drunk? I don't think so. Kind of wish, but no. Maybe it's because you're sending me TikToks while I'm trying to host a match. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. Pens down, Mike. Let's go to uh, Matthew. I just said Bad Boys 2. No. And Mike. I abbreviated the last word, but the great mouse detective. Uh, really, no. Uh, the answer was Rush Hour 3. Rush Hour 3. Uh, Rush so, Hour 3. your final question of the round is in the category of Star Wars. And your question is, in The Force Awakens, who does Poe give the map to Luke to before being taken by the First Order? I unapologetically love this movie. It is my second favorite film in the franchise. I like The Force Awakens. I don't I don't hate it like a lot of people do. I don't hate the sequels as much as everybody does, honestly. Same. I think they get worse each one, but man, let me tell you, I love this movie. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. I saw this in the theater like 15 times. Uh, let's go to uh, Mike. BB-8. And uh, Matthew. I said Finn. BB-8 is correct. So, uh, Mike will take a one-point lead. Coming out of round number one, it is six to five in favor of Mike. So, we're going to move into round number two. Here's how it is going to work. I'm going to bring in the wheel from wheeldecide.com. Each player is going to have a chance to spin the wheel. If you like what you spin the first time, you can keep it, but you have to spin what, or keep whatever you spin the second time. Uh, if you choose to spin again. So each question is worth two points a piece. Unless you want to check the multiple choice, uh, then it'll be worth only one point. Stealing is available in this round, so be on the lookout. It gets quite spooky. Both players have all three repeats and their challenge intact. The I categories on the... What's that? I used a repeat. Yes, you did, and I didn't mark it. Thank you for being honest. So Mike has two repeats left. Uh, so the categories on the wheel today are Disney Animation, Star Wars, Pixar, Criminal Underworld, Star Trek, MCU, Wizarding World, and James Bond. Mike, you are in the lead. Do you want to spin first or defer to Matthew? Uh, let's ask the studio audience. What do you guys want me to do? They want me to defer. Oh, oh okay. Uh, we're going to bring in Javi. This is going to be the spin for Matthew. It's okay, Matthew. I also was like 100% confident it was Finn, so... Uh, lands on Wizarding World. How are you feeling? Do you want to go with something that you could really make points on, or do you think you feel good enough on this one? Sure. I mean, I feel like there are, are a lot worse categories that I could land on. Do you? Should we just take it? With based on how the score is. You know what? I think, I think, I think you're going to do well in this if you take it. Um, but that said, if you don't feel confident in it, we can we can spin again, I, and we'll that'll be on me. Let's spin again. Yeah, okay, this is what you're going to be stuck with, and it lands on Star Wars. All right, okay. it's all right. Take your time. Repeat. Yeah. You got this, buddy. Cool. 
All right, Matthew, I'll be giving you your questions in the category of Star Wars. Are you ready, sir? Mm -hmm. All right, your first question in the category of Star Wars. Which Star Wars film features an execution ceremony gone wrong where three beasts are sent to execute three prisoners? Five, four, three. Multiple choice. All right. Your options are A, Attack of the Clones, B, Revenge of the Sith, C, The Last Jedi, or D, Solo. A? A is correct for one point and a tie game. All right, Matthew, your next question. Who plays Poe Dameron in The Last Jedi? Oscar Isaac. That's correct for two points in the lead. All right, your third question. What body part does Luke lose in The Empire Strikes Back? arm that is incorrect let's go to mike for the two-point steal his right hand that is correct for a two-point steal and uh, javi do you want to be brought in okay do you remember if it's his right hand or left hand i don't yeah i don't remember but I think it is right hand. I just wanted to double check with you and like just pause it for a sec. Sorry about that. No, you're good. Yeah. So no challenge. No challenge. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so with that two point steal, uh, Mike ties it up, and Matthew, we're going to your next question. Okay. What is Mon Mothma's political title in Rogue One: A Star Wars Story? Uh, multiple choice. All right. Your options are A, governor, B, senator, C, president, or D, congresswoman. Can you repeat of the options? Yes, you can. Your options again are A, governor, B, senator, C, president, or D, congresswoman. I'll go Senator. That is correct for one point. And your final question, Matthew. What possession of Leia's does Luke discover right before the Rebels meet the Ewoks in Return of the Jedi? Uh, multiple. All right, your options are A, her blaster, B, her jacket, C, her helmet, or D, her communicator. A? A is incorrect. Mike, chance for a one-point steal. Is it A, her blaster, B, her jacket, C, her helmet, or D, her communicator? Her helmet. That is correct for a one-point steal. So, at the end of Matthew's spin, he gets his total up to nine, but with the steals, Mike is also at nine. So, we are going to bring back up the wheel. This is going to be the spin for Mr. Mike Shea. And it lands on Disney Animation. Would you like to keep it or spin again? We'll spin again. Okay. This is what you're going to be stuck with. And it lands on Star Trek. All right. All right, Mike, I will be giving you your questions in Star Trek. Are you ready? Yep. All right, your first question. Which Star Trek film features a member of the Delton alien race? Star Trek Beyond? That is incorrect. Matthew, chance for a two-point steal. 
Um, Star Trek Into Darkness. It is also incorrect. We were looking for the motion picture. The motion picture. Oh. All right. So, Mike, your second question. Who plays the villain Crawl in Star Trek Beyond? Idris Elba. That is correct for two points. Your third question. What is the name of the Klingon Chancellor who is assassinated in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country? Crap on a cracker. Uh, multiple choice. All right, your options are A, Azitbur, B, Chang, C, Cartwright, or D, Gorkin? D? I'm sorry, one more time. D as in dog. That is correct for one point. All right, Mike, your next question. Starfleet headquarters is located in what city on Earth in Star Trek Into Darkness? San Francisco. That is correct for two points. And your final question of this round. Complete this quote from Star Trek Generations. They say blank is the fire in which we burn. We are looking for one word. Time. That is correct for two more points. So Mike gets his total up to 16. Matthew is still at nine. So it is a seven point game as we get into round number three, the betting round. Here's how it's going to work. I'm going to say the category. The players are going to decide whether they want to bet zero, one, or two on the question. If they get the question right, they will gain those points. If they get the question wrong, they will lose those points. We will play until someone is mathematically eliminated or we have reached the end of the match. Gentlemen, any questions? Uh, whiteboards on this one? Yes. Okay. All right. First category you can bet points on is sci-fi icons. Let's get bets, starting with Matthew. Two. And Mike. Going with one. Okay. Here's your question in the category of sci-fi icons. In Back to the Future, Doc has Marty meet him in the parking lot of what kind of location to test out time travel for the first time? Ah, delicious. I think my dog is dead. Oh, no. Oh, that's a shame. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Matthew, we're going to you. Ma. And Mike. I said mall parking lot. Mall is correct. So 17 to 11. It is now a six point game. Four questions remaining. Your next category is American Spies. Let's get that starting with Mike. Uh, I'm sticking with one point. And Matthew. I'm just going to have to go for it, too. Okay. Here's your question Name two actors who have only purchased portrayed Jack Ryan one time in an American Spies film. Do you know the answer, Nick? She's still not listening. Understood. Understood. My apologies. White Shadow. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. Mike, we're starting with you. I'm not sure about one of these. Ben Affleck and Chris Pine. And Matthew. Is it Chris Pine, Harrison Ford? And your winner, Mike Shay. Uh, Chris Pine and Ben Affleck was the correct answer. Harrison Ford, unfortunately, having played Jack Ryan twice. The other answer we would have uh, accepted was Alec Baldwin. Alec Baldwin. So uh, a final score of 18 to nine, a very dominant uh, performance from Mike Shea. And, and it was neck and neck for a while there. Matthew seemed to have gotten a spin. He wasn't super excited about, but he made his way through. He powered through. And this easily could have been knockout territory, but uh, Matthew being a very good trivia player was able to uh, kind of bet 
in the way that he needed to in these types of situations, get the points he needed to in round two uh, to, to make it through. But Mike, having a really good game, 18 points is is, is pretty disgusting, frankly. So great job uh, to both players. We're going to go talk to them right now in the post-match interviews. Let's go talk to them. Matthew, uh, I think you played great. And, you know, we say this a lot of like the score didn't like, ah, rah, rah. You didn't seem excited about either of your spins, uh, frankly. And so I think, you know, Javi, Javi does this thing I've noticed since he's been managing a lot where he he takes the blame. Maybe that's the point of the manager. Uh, I don't know. I don't do it that often. But I think you played really great nonetheless. Uh, you kept it close in round one. And honestly, you were really close on that last question, too. It's just it is. It, one little slip up and that's what it is so matthew uh how are you feeling about the match overall against mike today yeah. I, I think there are some definitely some points where like i should have hit i was like i don't know why i said mother i definitely meant to write wife and then it just was the wrong uh relationship and then you know saying arm instead of hand you know like because they're just so connected and yeah i i feel like star wars and wizarding world they're both categories where like i haven't seen them in like a few years so it was just like a toss up whether which one i would do better in and uh, you know mike did a great job though as you know i, I can't count him out so just un unfortunately wasn't able to yeah no absolutely uh javi your thoughts on the match and how matthew played yeah i take the blame on it uh a few times just because i think like as a manager my role is so minimal and when i screw it up it's like well you know um so like yeah, we maybe should have kept Wizarding World, um, but as a manager, I should have just been like, no, keep Wizarding World, whatever. Um, we were also in a position where we needed to bet to a bunch. Um, it just didn't pay off. It was, you know, the Jack Ryan movies are those kinds of movies that n not enough people remember because, frankly, they're they're good, but they're not memorable, you know? Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, Mike played great. Um, Matthew, Matthew will be back. Um, even though he doesn't want to, he just wants to play melee. But we're forcing him to, we're, we're forcing him to be chained to fandom, um, whether he <laughs> likes it or not. So uh, yeah, <laughs> sounds good, uh, Matthew. This does mean that uh, right now, you know, this is another loss on the record. But you still are going to be. I, I would like to see you back in fandom, uh, even though it sounds like maybe Javi's forcing you against your will. Uh, but if you come back, Matthew, who do you want to play next? Um, I, I think um, Bridget would be fun. I, I've met her a little few times, and she seems like a fun player to play right now. Where I'm not really focused on fandom, so I feel like that'd be a pretty even match. We're gonna oh. make you focused on it, though. We're gonna you're gonna <laughs> study up. <laughs> I like the sounds of it, Matthew. We'll see you in the next match. Thanks for being here. Great job today, Mike. Not only did you play from a car, but you won from a car. Uh, your thoughts on the match against Matthew? And again. 18 points. Man. I saw you laughing backstage. It's disgusting. That's a really yeah. good match because, uh, you know, in round one, uh, six points, round two, doing well in Star Trek and even missing one and getting up to that 18 points, only two questions deep in round three. That's It's an impressive score. So how are you feeling about the match going uh, today? Uh, you know, I'm feeling good. Uh, I'm feeling really good. It, it's always nice to uh, to get a, to get a big win. Uh, because it, it, it's nice to have that refresher that of like, ah, oh, yeah, no, I still know this stuff. Um, uh, sh shout out to Matthew for, for making me have to work for it, though. Um, you know, he kept it a close game throughout the entire run. Um, it was, it, it, I don't, I don't play very often anymore. So when I do get to play, it's always, it's always nice to play against someone who, who's like me, who's just here to have a good time and put a, put a, put on a great show for the fans. Am I right, guys? Yeah. Yeah, what a, what a great show today it's been. Hopefully we don't get canceled. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Maybe there's something to performing in the car. Maybe I just need to do this from now on. That's fair. And, and, and just tune out all the other distractions. I don't know. Uh, so, Mike, uh, here's what's next for you. Okay. I don't know. Uh, oh, you're you're <laughs> so I, I okay. swear to God, I don't know. You're going to have another match. Uh, I don't know if this was your play into the tournament or if you're going to have another match next to maybe play into the tournament. Um, I just don't know, but um, this is a good win on your record. It makes, uh, makes your case for being in the tournament a little bit better now that you're at a four and six record and maybe you can get one more win before going into the tournament. I just don't know. These are the things that I need Nick for, but if I you're like going to come back, 
if you're going to come back uh, for another match, uh, who, who do you want to play? Is there somebody specific or are you just, you know, like just along for the ride? <laughs> you guys know me. I don't go looking for fights. I, I let the fights come to me. So anybody who gets paired up against me, I will face them all the same way as I do any other match with my head held high and a firm grip on my ball. Like that's what's going it, to, it's, it's the best way. Seriously, if you guys are having trouble with self-confidence, just grab hold of them and just, hey, hey, these are mine. These, no one can take these away from me. As long as I've got these, I've got something for myself. Okay. Oh my goodness. And the blue shirt. You know what I mean? All right. Well, Mike, (laughs) Mr. Mike Shea, congrats on a very impressive win. Like I said, I thought it was really good. I can't wait to see you back for the next match uh, and see what you do then. So thank you. And uh, thanks for, thanks for giving the giggles, Mike. Thanks. That's what I'm here for. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us tonight at Fandom Fights. I want to thank Mike. I want to thank Matthew and Javi. Thank you to Nick uh, for writing the match. I've been Tim. We will see you guys next time with another great match. And remember, wash the grapes before you eat them. You got to wash them before you eat them. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.